Hi, this is Brittany from Hand to Mind. This is our fourth grade teach at home math video series. This is week five, day five. So today we're gonna step back into thinking about decimals, but not just decimals, but decimal fractions. And we're gonna go back to our idea of going back to dimes and pennies because that makes our decimals so much nicer to work with. So today, come join me as we look at the relationships between our dimes and our pennies or our tenths and our hundredths. So today, we're going to begin with a story from a fourth grade class. So it begins like this. The fourth grade classes gathered items to send to troops overseas. They have enough items to make 100 care packages. To make the packages, they laid out 100 bags in rows of 10. To show when a bag is filled, a student ties up the bag with a ribbon. So far, the first four rows are tied and seven bags are tied in the fifth row. Okay, um, what fraction of the bags have students filled. Okay, so this is a lot of information, a lot of information. So we need to think about what this is about. So who or what is this about? We see that it's about a fourth grade class. Yes. And we know what is this fourth grade class doing? Well, it's gathering items for the troops for the troops overseas. Have you ever done something like that where you've gathered stuff and then given it away? So yeah, that's what they're doing for the people overseas. And they have enough items to make a hundred care packages. So they're gonna make a hundred care packages. And it looks like when they make them, they're gonna make them in rows of 10. So there's gonna be 10 rows. We, rows of 10 can be the same thing as saying 10, um, 100 bags in rows of 10. And so that's 10 rows of 10 bags is what that is. That's saying there's because there's 100 bags, there's 10 rows of 10 bags. So to show when a bag is filled, the student ties it. So if you look at this picture, that might be what it looks like when they filled it. And they're saying that the first four rows of those 10 rows, they've already filled because they've got bags that already have those. And then that fifth row only has seven. So it doesn't quite have the 10 bags that's on each row. It just has seven of them. So to model this situation, we're gonna use our base 10 blocks. So if you have base 10 blocks, you can use these. If not, just follow along with us we're gonna to go to braining camp where we're going to practice this. So um, what we're going to do is we're gonna start with a flat, okay? We're gonna start with a flat because the flat is going to represent our 10 rows. So our 10 rows. So this is a row, a row, these are the rows of bags because in each one of these rows, how many bags are there? There are 10. Ah, so there's 10. Now, remember the information said that four rows had them filled, right? So four rows had them filled. And on the fifth row, there were only seven filled. Okay, there were only seven bags filled. Okay, so let's show that. We're gonna show our four rows filled by using our base 10 blocks. So a way that I can do this is just like this. I can put it on top there and then I can do the same thing. There's two rows and then the same thing. There's three rows, and then the same thing. There's four rows. So one thing I'm gonna do is erase those so that does, okay? So that shows you right there 
that shows you how many, oops, I think I lost one. So let's do that again. So that shows you how many rows were filled with bags, right? Because I know that each one of these represents a bag. Okay. So then though it said that on the fifth row, so on this row right here, on this row, there were only seven bags filled. So we're gonna represent those seven bags using our little unit cubes. We're gonna come over here and we'll put it right there. Two. There's three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. So there's our seven. So if I wanted to figure out how much of the whole hundred bags have we filled so far, what could I do if we're thinking about these as decimal fractions? Well, I know that this is four. Out of how many of these would it take to fill up this whole thing? It would take 10, right? So it's four tenths plus what do each one of those represent? When you're looking at it as a whole, it's seven bags out of a hundred. So four tenths of the bags are um, filled plus seven hundredths of the bag. Now we can put those together. But before we can put those together, we have to think about what is the same thing as four tenths? Isn't that the same thing as 40 hundredths? Because each one of these is 10, right? So that's 10, 20, 30, 40. It's each one of those like that. So 40 hundredths plus seven hundredths equals 47 hundredths. There's a decimal fractions because they're, we're talking about those fractions that end in tenths and hundredths because now I could take this and I could switch it into a decimal as 47 hundredths, couldn't I? Yeah, that's a really nice way of looking at that, of, of thinking about that whole and taking those tenths and those hundredths and combining those um, to get your to get you solve the problem. So what that tells us is how much of the bags, let's go back to our question. So what fraction of the bags have the students filled? Well, they filled 47 hundredths of the bags, which is the same thing as writing as a decimal like this. So nice job. So now let's look at this as from practice. It says that Melissa has five dimes and nine pennies. What fraction of a dollar does she have? So this is about Melissa and the dimes and, and pennies. And it wants to know what fraction of a dollar. Well, how many pennies make a dollar? That's a hundred. That's probably why they have this nice flat because that represents a hundred, right? Now, we have five dimes. So where are your five dimes represented in this picture? Did you say these five rods? Yeah, so this would be like the five rods. So that's how many of those out of 10, right? Five tenths. And then how much pennies? There's nine out of how many total pennies? Out of 100. So now I'm finding five tenths plus nine hundredths. Well, what do you know about five tenths? Well, it's the same thing as 50 hundredths. So what is 50 hundredths plus nine hundredths? Did you say 59 hundredths? Yeah, we can write that as a decimal, as um, 
59 hundredths, or 0 0.59, or 59 cents, we could say. Yeah, nice job. Okay, let's look at another one. The fourth graders are using the cafeteria for a meeting. There are 10 tables, and each table seats 10 students. When all the students are seated, seven tables are filled, and one table has three students. What fraction of the seats are being used? Well, who or what is this about? It's about fourth graders. And what are these fourth graders doing? Well, there's seats in the cafeteria, right? So how many total seats are there? Well, there's 10 tables with 10 students, 10 seats, right? We're 10 students. So how many is that? That's a hundred seats. What else do we know? We know that seven of the tables are filled. So how can we use this picture to help us show seven tables filled? Could I fill them like this? That's a table, two tables, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And then this next table only has how many students? Three. So, so if I want to know what fraction of the seats are being used, well, I know that seven of the ta of the 10 tables, so 7 tenths of the tables are being used, plus three seats out of 100 are being used. And so how many, what fraction of the seats? Well, I know the 7 tenths is the same thing as 70 hundredths, because those have 70 seats, plus 3 hundredths. So what is 70 hundredths plus 3 hundredths? Did you say 73 hundredths? Yeah, so we can write that in fraction form or we can write that in decimal form. Nice job. So let's play a game called closest to one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the dice and that's gonna give us our numerators. And then we're gonna add it up, we're gonna get our answer, and then whoever gets closest to one gets a point, okay? You get to go first. So here we go. So here, this is your first numerator, so two tenths plus three hundredths. So what's two tenths plus three hundredths? Well, what do you know about two tenths? It's actually the same thing as twenty hundredths. So what's twenty hundredths plus three hundredths? Twenty three hundredths, or I can write it in decimal form. Okay, my turn. I get six tenths two hundredths. So what do I know about six tenths? That's the same thing as sixty hundredths plus two hundredths is sixty two hundredths. Or I can write it this way. So who's closer to one? Is twenty three hundredths or sixty two hundredths closer to one? I'm closer to one. So I get the point. So here it goes again. Your turn. You get three tenths plus two hundredths. So that's the same thing as saying 30 hundredths plus 2 hundredths. What is that? 32 hundredths. Or in decimal form, nice. Here we go. 2 tenths plus 4 hundredths. Let's see what I got. I know that's 20 hundredths plus 4 hundredths is 24 hundredths. Who's closer to one? 3,200 hundredths or 24 hundredths? 32 hundredths is closer to one. Okay, last time for you. So you get two tenths plus three hundredths, which is the same thing as 20 hundredths plus three hundredths is 23 hundredths, or writing it like that, nice. And I'm going to get three tenths plus three hundredths. So that's the same thing as 30 hundredths plus three hundredths, which is 33 hundredths. Let's see. Is 23 hundredths or 33 hundredths closer to one? 33 hundredths. Oh, I got two and you got one. So I guess I won this time. So thanks for joining me today. If you would like to continue working on this skill of composing the decimal fractions, 
then please go to handinmind.com where you can find more activities to reinforce this. I hope you all have a great rest of the day.